Virat Kohli is the player for India that he does everything. You know, like he might not be taking the wickets, but he's jumping around just as much as the uh, as the bowlers. He's involved with everything. He's, he's chipping away at the batsman. You know, he's always got something to say. He's diving around in the field. He's you know he's he's probably the player that sort of stands out from the team as the player photographically. Cricket is not just a sport. It's a story of jubilation, relief, of euphoria and agony. Moments of pure emotion laid bare for us to celebrate. Gareth Copley has been telling this story with his camera for over 25 years. Let's hear from him as he takes us through some immortal moments in cricket. So my name is Gareth Copley. I'm a cricket photographer working for Getty Images. Um, I spend most of my life photographing cricket. Uh, well, I started um, nearly 25 years ago um, and I was lucky back then it was all film cameras before digital cameras came along um, and it was all about um, taking taking your, your film camera out and you've got 36 exposures and you'd have to take some pictures at the match and then try and develop them yourself and send up scanning the films and um, it was quite a process back then so they needed people that would assist the photographers that would come and collect their films and develop them. So I was sort of a photographer's assistant. Um, but for the first 20 minutes of a game, I would get to take my own pictures until it was time to run around and collect everyone's films. Um, and luckily things happened in those first 25 minutes of taking pictures. And um, I got a few nice pictures and um, yeah, sort of progressed on to being a fully fledged photographer. I've taken, um, it's hard to remember like the, the favorite pictures because it's it's that balance between the favorite moments you were at, you know, the the great because you know as well as England's photographer, I'm also you know a fan of England. I like to see him do well. So those those moments that when they won the World Cup final in 2019 and have won Ashes down in Australia. Um, but then there's also the smaller games where we, where you're taking great pictures. So. My favourite pictures probably Ben Stokes at Headingley in 2019 when he basically won the match single-handedly and had a massive scream when he hit the winning runs. Um, the World Cup final, all the celebrations around there. Um, as, as photographers for the ICC, we, we get access onto the field as soon as the match has been won. So I ran onto the field and everyone is pandemonium and you just, there was pictures everywhere. and got pictures of Joffrey Archer and Ben Stokes hugging and uh, those were great pictures. Well, that's a famous photo, I suppose, with Jonathan Trott getting run out um, in the 2019 Ashes. He was flying through the air and the bales were coming off. And that was lucky, it won, a, it won a few awards that year. It was nominated the World Press Photo of the Year, um, which means it was basically the best sports picture taken that year which uh, considering how many sports pitches get taken, it was quite, a, quite an honour. Um, India winning at, um, at Lords in the recent series. Um, so that's, that's Virat Kohli. So the typical example of, you know, you watch one player. So Virat was captain then. So the, the, the sort of done thing is you watch the captain as the last wicket falls, because they tend to really, you know, very expressive and celebrate a lot. So yeah, that was Virat running out of the slips to uh, to reach the bowler and, uh, and celebrate winning the series. It was a good atmosphere, um, not for an England fan, but yeah, if you're an, a cricket fan or a, an Indian fan, yeah. You get caught up in the moment, you sort of have to detach yourself from it and, and think I'm here to do a job. Um, but yeah, it's more after the event, when you look back at those pictures and you go, wow, I, I was really privileged to be where I was and take those pictures. Um, yeah, but I'm, I can't lie, when, when it was heading Lee and Ben Stokes were, could have been out any ball and it got very, very tense and yeah, you, you do, you sort of cheer yes when, when he's hit those runs and you, you, you're cheering as well because you know you've got the picture and you think, wow, wow, that was pretty amazing. I do uh, like the, the picture when Ian Botham sort of did the same thing as Ben Stokes did and, and won a game single-handedly uh, heading Lee. That, it's a famous picture of him smoking a cigar in the dressing rooms. And I, I do really like that picture and I wish I'd, I'd taken it. I wish I'd been there. I was only one at the time. So 
it, it was my colleague Stu Forster, you know, as soon as Ben left the field, say, can I quickly nip in the dressing rooms and we'll do this picture, you know, you've just done exactly, you know, what Beefy did, you know, all that time ago. Can we sort of recreate the picture? And he, like, hats off to Stu because it was a brilliant picture and he's got He's got the Bofum and the uh, the Ben Stokes picture hanging in his living room, so I think it's one of the great pictures. That. Yeah, I've got you know I'd like to think I've got a good relationship with the with most of the players because I've, I've sort of been doing it that long. Um, like I'm quite privileged because um, Getty are the uh, official photographers for the ECB and, and we photograph all the cat presentations. So before a match, we'd be in the huddle with the players. So you see these young players coming and getting their international cap for the first time and then you sort of follow their career through. So I've seen people like Joe Root and Ben Stokes all, you know, first entering the team and now we're, you know, the world superstars. So part of my job is I'm quite close to the team and you, you often get to he, you half hear those conversations that they have in the huddle. And there's certain players, like Owen Morgan's always a favourite. You, you go in the huddle and you would hear what was what he was telling his players and you would walk out of that huddle thinking yes yeah i can do that because he would make every player feel 10 foot tall he was an amazing leader and um, and he, you sort of left it thinking yeah yeah well, we can run through brick walls we can win this game you know things are up against us but we'll win it and anybody that heard what Morgs was saying at the time would have left the um, left the huddle feeling exactly the same. Um, obviously, he wasn't talking to me; he was talking to his players. But um, you know, you, you're incredibly privileged to hear those things that are just not on. They're not on television. They're, they're not reported in the press. And to be honest, when I walk out of it, I, I can't remember what what's being said. But I just remember at the time it was, wow, that was inspiring stuff. So we're very lucky. The players use our pictures a lot uh, in their social media. It's all about building their profile. But yeah, the, when Ben bowed out her ODIs and I had a picture of him walking up the stairs afterwards, um, he did send a message on social media saying um, that I do a good job, which, you know, I, it, yeah, it's a massive compliment if the England captain says I do a good job. Um, there, there is certain players that are absolute box office out there you know I, I I photograph when it comes to England I photograph it, all the players um, but you do notice in opposition teams that there are players that you know you could just sit and watch them all day through the camera because they're always doing stuff v Virat Kohli is the player for India that he does everything you know like he might not be taking the wickets but he's jumping around just as much as the uh, as the bowlers He's involved with everything. He's, he's chipping away at the batsman. You know, he's always got something to say. He's diving around in the field. He's, you know, he's he's probably the player that sort of stands out from the team as the player photographically that um, he's always involved in things. Well, my advice is to is to try everything. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't say I want to be a cricket photographer. Um, or a football photographer, you know, try all different types of sports, try all different types of photography, really. Um, you know, we we try and bring all those different elements of portrait photography and landscape photography into photographing cricket. So keep all your options open. Don't narrow yourself down. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Um, and if there is a particular sport you're interested in, learn about the sport because it's you're trying to be ahead of the game you're trying to know what happens in the game before it happens so you need to be in that spot so learn about the batsmen and the bowlers learn about what pitches you know look better of these batsmen and the bowlers you know if they celebrate a certain way or if they play a certain shot to a certain side of the field if they're more of a leg side or an offside player um bowlers you know with their actions just Immerse yourself in it, learn all about the sport. Um, likewise, with other sports, learn about all these different characters on the field. The more you know about them, the better your pictures will be.